A wise man once said, if the human brain were so simple that we could understand it, we would be so simple that we couldn't. The human brain is the most complex object in the known universe, and to begin to understand its general structure and function, we start with the fundamental building blocks, the cells that compose the brain, the neurons. Neurons are great communicators. They are the brain cells that receive, process and send signals between sense organs and the brain. They are the basic units, individual cells, located in the brain and throughout the entire nervous system. They consume more energy than any other group. More than a quarter of all the calories we take every day are consumed by our brain's activity. Neurons are where the action is. It is the part where the focus of most of our research is. We call the study of the biological basis of thought neuroscience because it all comes from the neurons. There are three types of neurons classified according to what they do. Sensory neurons are specialized to respond to signals from sensory organs and transmit those signals to other neurons in the brain or spinal cord. Motor neurons do the opposite. They send signals from the brain and spinal cord to muscles to control movement. So if you touch something hot and feel the pain, that's sensory neurons. If you rent your hand back, that's motor neurons. And finally, there are interneurons, which link sensory and motor neurons. The central part of a neuron is called the cell body. Like all cells, it contains a nucleus, which regulates the cell's functions. The cell body is also known as soma or pericardion. The skin that surrounds the cell is called the cell membrane. The sending end of the neuron is the axon, along which signals travel to other neurons. Most axons are covered with myelin, which is a fatty substance that helps impulses efficiently travel down the axon. Each neuron has only a single axon, but most axons divide into many branches. The ends of those branches are called terminals. The branching allows each neuron to send a message to more than one place at a time. At the very ends of the terminals are terminal buttons. This is the last stop on this end. On the other end, there are three shaped structures called dendrite, which derive its name from a Greek word, dendron, meaning tree. Dendrites are receivers. They receive messages from the axons of other neurons and it causes the neuron to fire. A neuron is considered fired when the dendrites receive inputs and decide to pass them to other neurons through the axon. The synapse is the place where communication between neurons occurs, where an axon sends a signal to the dendrite of another neuron. The synapse is made up of three parts, the piece, of the axon that delivers the message, the portion of the receiving neuron's dendrite, and the space between the axon and dendrite, known as the synaptic cleft. The sending and receiving neurons never touch each other, they are separated by this gap. There are 100 billion neurons in our brains and each connects to thousands, maybe tens of thousands of other neurons through synapses. They form brain circuits this way, they work together to receive input, operate on it some way, and produce a specific output. Because of this kind of complexity, this degree of structure, which there is currently no way to replicate in any machine, is why people describe the brain as the most complicated machine in the universe. Those brain circuits are the structures that allow us to catch a ball, create something unique, or understand everything. Understanding synapse, the synaptic cleft is so important because this is where brain circuits often are disrupted. This is where many drugs have their effects. The chemical signals that travel through the synapse are called neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitter molecules are contained in small sacs called vesicles. Dopamine, noradrenaline, serotonin and acetylcholine are some examples of them and they each have their own distinguishing features. Like, dopamine is affiliated with motivation, learning, and thoughts, but you rely on neuroadrenaline to dream or pay attention. Serotonin is the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter regulating mood and sleep. 
Shortage of serotonin is related to obsessive compulsive disorder, insomnia, depression, and so on. Acetylcholine causes muscles to contract or keeps your memory working. Thus, when you have a problem in your synapses that disrupts the flow of acetylcholine, it will lead to Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, spasms or delusions. There is an ancient drug used by native tribes of South America called curare. It blocks the acetylcholine flow in the synapse and temporarily blocks motor neurons from affecting their muscle fibers. It paralyzes you. Curare is the origin of the anesthesia we use during surgeries today. Neurons are either at rest or they are sending signals. When at rest, they maintain a negative charge within them. This is called the resting potential. During rest, more positively charged ions are outside the neuron than are inside it. When dendrites receive input, these positive and negative ions exchange. The action potential means electrical messages traveling down the axon. When the electric reach synapse, the information is transformed from an action potential into a chemical message so it can cross the synaptic cleft. The release of those chemical signals can or cannot trigger another action potential in the other neuron, conveying the message onward or it can quiet the message. This means neurons will get selective in time. When we practice something, we put the same neurons at work and with repeated activity, the synapse circuits get stronger. So the next message get through easily and more rapidly. That's how learning is done in our brain among our most used synapses. Repeated activities create stronger synapse roads.